Moving to West Africa now, where Burkina Faso has joined neighboring Mali in extending a junta rule. The move was announced over the weekend after a national consultation meeting was held in the capital city of Ouagadougou. As per the amended charter, the new 60-month transition period will take effect from the 2nd of July this year. Now, this allows Burkina Faso's military leader, Ibrahim Traoré, to stay in power for five more years. In fact, under the new agreement, Traoré will also be able to run in elections at the end of the five-year transition period. The charter also holds the possibility of holding early polls if the security situation allows. Burkina Faso has been governed by the army since January of 2022. And that was when Lieutenant Colonel Paul-Henri Dambi had uh, seized power from President Roche Kabore. Dambi had uh, said that the coup was necessary since the previous government had failed to deal with the escalating militant violence. Now, the West African country has been ravaged by rebels linked to al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group. Since 2015, the extremists have waged an insurgency, killing thousands, displacing more than two million and pushing tens of thousands to the brink of starvation. Now, however, in September of 2022, Damibe was ousted by another coup that was orchestrated by Ibrahim Tarore. And that's because Tarore accused Damibe himself was uh, also unable to tackle the insurgency. One, Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henri Santiago Damiba is dismissed from his position as the president of the MPSR. Two, Captain Traore Ibrahim is appointed president of the MPSR effective immediately. The 36 year old military leader is the youngest head of state in the world. However, very little is known about him. For his supporters, Ibrahim Traore is a messiah, but critics view him as a paranoid autocrat. When Traore seized power in 2022, he insisted that he would not be in charge for long. He promised to restore civilian rule by the 1st of July this year. Back then, he had also pledged to improve the country's dire security situation within two to three months. But since issuing the pledge, he has said that elections are not a priority. Ever since taking power, the military under Traoré has expelled French troops and diplomats. Instead, they have now turned to Russia for military assistance. Our African heads of state must stop acting like puppets who dance every time the imperialists pull the strings. Yesterday, President Vladimir Putin announced the shipment of grain to Africa. We are very happy. We thank him for this. But this is also a message passed on to our African heads of state because, at the next forum, we should not come here without having assured, for those who do not know about war, the food self-sufficiency of our people. We need to take example on those who have the experience of being able to achieve this in Africa, to build good relations here and to build better relations with the Russian Federation to be able to meet the needs of our populations. At the end of September 2023, Traore was on the brink of being overthrown. That was just before the first anniversary of his own seizure of power. An attempted coup was foiled at the last minute. And in the days that followed, Traore took drastic measures. Security was stepped up. Armored vehicles were deployed and traffic was banned at night. Now, the new charter extends Traore's power even further. The national consultations happened swiftly over the weekend. It was attended by civil society, security forces and transitional lawmakers. However, most political parties did not participate. This comes as violence from extremist groups continues to soar. Meanwhile, human rights groups have accused Burkina Faso's junta leaders of abuses against civilians. And now a further extension of the junta rule raises concerns over the democratic backsliding in West and Central Africa. First Post reports from the world's second largest continent. Hello, I'm Alison Lagrange. A very warm welcome from Durban, South Africa. We get you the news and the newsmakers from Africa. South Africa goes to the polls on the 29th of May. 
I will track the election and bring you ground reports. Is it the end of the road for the African National Congress? And will former President Jacob Zuma stage a dramatic comeback? From elections, to climate change, to innovations and opportunities. As the world's attention shifts, we report from Africa, the heart of the Global South. Join me every weekday live on First Post.